Welcome back to another animation analysis and today I'm going to take a look at Duelists. This has been on my list for a long time. I'm catching up on all those trailers and I know some people have commented that this is a uh, animation analysis slash reaction and yes it will be analysis but come on. <laughs> I have to lead with come on. The reason why I'm picking this is because I just love the look of it. That's the first thing just even that already, that opening, the composition, the colors, everything is already very cool. And then this kicks in and this is throughout the whole trailer. And I just love that. Hey, the colors, the combination, the typeface, the, everything's just really, really well presented. It's just so well done. And let's go in there and you have that little, almost that biggerish piece is a bit more highlighted. This is all a bit darker. And then in here, boom, you got the first explosion and it leads into this. Already that, just the look of all of this. It has that very painterly, non-CG look. And then you got your first animation. This is your prop animation here. Nothing huge to analyze, but what I like about this is that as it goes through, it still has pieces of the fire there. So if you ever are animating prop pieces or anything that has an environment being, you know, whatever you have rain, whatever this case is fire, think about how that influences your pieces or a character going through, and you can use that to your advantage and animate it. You got all kind of things is still going on here. And then we see the introduction of the character. But again, the look is super cool. Love that too. Just the framing of this with the darker color and muted and colder with this blazing fire in the middle. And then the character comes in and then we get to see a good look on how the character is rendered as well. And come on. I know this is going to be another one of those come on, but cool elements here too in terms of how the character is glowing the textures the painterly look of this you got your slight opening a bit wider on the eye and a bit wider on a uh, eyebrow here so it gives, gives you that a little bit of a everything is kind of opening up looking this way but again just even that frame alone it's just very very cool and since this is very 2d elementy style i'm going to look at that just those one frame elements look at that that's very cool. I see a lot of people's personal animation that they post on LinkedIn or Twitter. They're adding 2D effects or a 3D that's kind of stylized to be looking like this. It's very cool. As he exits, you can see a little bit of drag on the hair. Look at that. Put this in real time. Oh, cool. Yeah, not too much. It's not too wavy. A lot of times in movies, the, the hair sim is always very wavy and soft and, and very silky. And never feels like is this greasy or thicker hair or whatever you know the character would be exposed to whatever environments and that would affect the cloth the hair and everything sometimes sim is a bit too soft and this is across all companies including where i work it's just kind of the thing that they do I'm not always a big fan but anyway continuing with awesome effects nice snappy moments here of of the animation i like that the eyebrows are leading then you got that snap down with the head it still affects the hair but you can still see there's it's not stylized in a sense where the animation is minimal. There's still a lot of detail work you can see in the shapes of how the cheeks are re relaxing. The amount of movement that you have in the skin all around. And even this here, it's very subtle move in the skin here in the lids. Very cool, still fairly soft. It, do, it does go back and forth between softer animation or softer as in spliny and smooth to more stepped and spider verse -y. Also cool here, if you look at that transition here, I put in my onion skinning, You're resting on him and as he remembers what's going on, look at that, oh cool. Super clean match, so that the eye doesn't have to go, whoa, somewhere else and it's completely disjointed there. It's a nice transition. Bam, into that run and they were getting those speed lines, but again, I'm not super, I have to say, versed in terms of colors. I can't tell you all the science behind it and how people react to warm and cold and everything, but I'm looking at this and it's just really cool. That's that's my <laughs> scientific uh, knowledge thing that I have here. But I just love that. Just the blend of the soft out of focus, warmer look, nice contrast for the character, but then you got the highlights here of the light and still with that glow in here. It's very cool. I mean, that could be just be a painting. I'm a big fan of styles like this in terms of animation. Now oh, we get to see the first action-y character coming in here. I'm looking at the nice 
jumpy animation, but you got still very clean silhouette here of the shapes. Look at that as the arm goes up, leading out with the character out of focus in the foreground here. Still got your speed lines there. That's cool too. I love that. Just a little it's accentuated by the sound. If you watch this, I'll put the uh, card up here with the uh, original link, the full link to the trailer. You can hear the, the sound of this. Love how it comes out fully focused on the character. That's for every time I look at this, you have to think about when does the character blink? I mean, you know, if, you, if you watch my animation analysis and uh, especially act analysis, I'm always big in terms of eye focus blinks and how long, how long do they blink? And as you can see, despite the action and coming sideways, there's no blink, there's no darting. It's just a complete focus on where the character is. This is cool though, getting into this and you can see the, ah, that little push out on the head as it hits the wall. Nice, long enough overlap to sell the weight. Let's watch this in real time. Oh, oh it's nice. Yeah, you feel that oh, do -do, that rhythm of hitting this and then the recovery and then the speed here for uh, the continuing of the, of the run. So it's not a pow, and then immediately running. So there's just enough weight and it sells how heavy the character is. You got all your prop animation. I'm always a big fan of It's still very clean. I was very clear in terms of what is going on. And even if you have elements in front of the character, you still have a color silhouette. You got some highlights here. Again, everything's very nicely presented. It's great too. With a little stretch a little bit here. Nice. With the highlight here. Just everything is just like I love looking at just every frame of this trailer. I know this is the reaction part of it, but it's so cool. You can see how he starts to gain, and so losing the amount of space that the character has. So the character is not oh, the character. The car the camera is not tracking where we have a certain amount of room here, and it starts to diminish, really giving us the sense of closing in. And here, the character is in the lead and fairly comfortable, so you give this enough room here. Get your speed lines again, and you got in the silhouette the character in the back. Oh, look at that! Come on, come on, come on! That's cool. Just enough to really read. Look at that. That's cool. Oh, nice hand pose. Your triangular hand pose. All is very clean, not too complicated, but still with enough offsets. So for anybody animating quick runs, it's still, you know, at this point, you're going to go in there frame by frame and pose out the fingers. You can see this here. Really nicely done. Clean silhouette. It's all very clear. And then we get a better look at the character with a nice turn and the nice clean soft edge there on the drag cool look at that that's cool how she grabs that comes out and then we get into i just love this character with the text typeface is nice nice clean silhouette you could exaggerate the lens there's got bigger into small i'm just a big fan of this and even on that slow motion you got that still moving i'm just a big fan and that's cool too. As she gets into this and shoo, throws the knife here, it's cool that it actually disturbs the text as well. And look at that, back into a clean pose. Come on, how can you not go through this frame by frame? Nice drag there too. It's also neat how these guys just hover. And all she has to do is kind of holds on to her. She doesn't have to hold on to the knives. It's very cool. Again, clean. I love that too. That expression just for that. Look at that. Come on. That's cool. That's a cool frame. Going out. Going back into him running. Don't be super picky. No one will ever see this. But imagine you're holding this and you have that moment of, oh, I got to get over there. It would have been cool to have potentially more relaxed finger pose and then it's tighter. Just for the tension, just for that moment. There must be a, a more tension moment there because of that sudden danger getting there, at least there. It's very cool. Look at that. Just the painterly aspect of all of this. That's cool too. All very clean here. Ooh, love this too. Watch this. Just a little cool. Man, this is just over one frame. Yeah, it just has that little... Yeah, you barely, I mean, if you, I don't think I would see this if I wouldn't frame through it. 
you can see the attention to detail in every frame. You got a slight drag here and stretchiness. The face gets a bit thinner through here. Still very clean. You got the highlights there just to give you a nice clean silhouette when it's in front of the body. And then back into nice face, really nice clean eyebrow shape too. Still got your asymmetry in the face. It's almost like it's preparing for that push against the, the face. That's cool too. Look at that. Just here, we still have a clean frame on the eye. <laughs> That's cool. Look at that. This is really stuff that you can only see frame by frame. It gets there, hits the gun, but it never really covers the face. Just keep it clean. You got the immediate change in the face for the reaction. And then with that, that's cool too. With that drag and then so it's kind of an overshoot in the face. Cool. Yeah, three point highlight there. Watch this in real time. Well, let's go back. And. Yeah, really nice rhythm. Yeah, you have that one, two, and then it will pause. You got one, two, pause, bigger one, and then two. So cool. What is he looking at? Just checking here. Fairly straight to camera, but it's kind of established that it goes right to left. And she goes left to right. So when she brings it back, this is left to right. It's cool too. Come on, every frame is cool. Like I said, she goes right to left. Here, a tiny bit of creature animation here. That frame too. I mean, this is really that whole trailer. The design of this. Comes in. That's cool too. I love that too. A couple of things here. You got your clean silhouette as you come in. You got your compression before you push off. You always have a full extension on the push off. Most of the times on landing as well. Very cool. Now once we get into a clean silhouette for a color silhouette too, dark in front of light. It's all clean. You got your 2D effect here. I mean, this could be CG, but it looks 2D. Nice with the push off. Would have been almost cool to have a little bit of debris dragging there but i love this how in midair she goes hey, there we go <laughs> what i was talking about here you got it right here that's cool i love that too that this speed that what she does here does affect the environment you can see it here like i mean this is what a couple frames and then we cut out before it comes in is this tiny but whoever did this bravo i love that so cool you even have this little effect here so many details that's cool too cloth information just on that grabs that let me just check something yeah yeah yeah. often uh neglected in student work there i say shoulder animation so as you bring this in you really want to bring a you want to bring in the chest because that whole arm is really going around it to grab the knife and the shoulder course gets pulled with it here and then as it pulls back you can see how far the shoulder goes back into all of this so you got all of that here pulling the shoulder back and doing another wire rotation in the chest don't forget that cut to this nicely silhouetted that's cool even that here is Ching! you can see this here we still understand what's going on it's definitely helped on the sound design you can hear the it's also cool that it's not actually in focus. We still want to keep it here and here. And this is your target here. That's cool. Oh, <laughs> come on. Oh, come on. I got to go frame my frame. All right, it's got a nice drag on the fingers and the wrist. And that, that's the arc. That's the path of it. So it drags following that path. And then look at that. That's your beautiful hand pose. Offset. Look at that. Oh, oh cool. It goes around it. It's really frame by frame into this. That's cool, but you still see the head. So well done. Oh, that's cool too. I love that little side skippy into this, leading first with that, and then going into this. And then, of course, that type of thing. That's nice too, a little streak into that. No text here, but actually we're cutting into the next shot. That's cool too. Look at that. Yeah, definitely frame by frame here. Look at that. But we still have a good sense of these are the fingers. You can't really see my yellow on yellow here. That's cool too. Look at that. So much work. 
nice curvature here. You can really sense that flow and then that little arc there at the end. That's cool. Little tiny details there. Look at that. Even this here, you got your clean silhouette, you got negative space here, got the nice flow in your body. And even ends and then ends with a little different facial expression. But look at the fire here. Come on. Slight animation in the hair. So cool. Love the colors and all this. I'm also a big fan of orange. I mean, this is very much to my liking here. Oh, that's cool. Cool angle on her. Always very clean. And it's nicely done because we see what's going on. We got the speed lines. Have the speed lines. Kind of blur. The speed is there. The poses are clean. But the focus is in the middle. The brightest point is in the middle because we have this coming in. So it's really cool in terms of leading the audience down to even this here has different changes. A little stretch into that. Wow. That's cool too. You can see even in this here, you got a little watch your face. <gasps> that little moment there. Just a little, oh, I got to do something. Realize what's going on. Not super phased by it. And then has that little, that's cool. Again, all super, even this here, even this hand. Nice hand poses. I'm just a big fan of hand poses. And they're clean. Nice little slight overlap, but not hindering any view of the face. This is starting to kick in here. Nice highlights there. It's just really nicely done. It's cool too. This might sometimes be in danger of not understanding what the shapes are. So the lighting is going to help understanding that bend of the knee. That's cool too. Foreground action. Pa -pa. Massive drag on the finger. Getting ready. And if you look here, you still see him silhouetted here. The highlight. Oh, with the high with the uh, brighter background. That's cool too. I mean, come on. If you watch this and you don't feel like you want to animate, I know what to tell you. I look at these frames like, oh, I want to do animation. I want to put in some 2D effects. I want to do all that kind of stuff here. So cool. Really nice strong poses. Very Spider-Man-y. Nice timing too on the stretcher. And again, not poppy in a sense of, ooh, that feels odd. It's just there's enough stylization, but still enough weight in there. It's cool too how she has that hang time. And then as it goes down, you can see it bends the arms more. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. The highlight, really beautiful poses. You got that nice curved line fully stretched on all of this and then bam compression there cool the effect on this that landing broke this and you can see here coming in even if it's somewhat off screen shadow comes in ready to go oh you know i love this interaction with the set it's as if you see her going out pushes this out the eye goes here it kind of leads the audience into this the camera as well for this character look at this everything points towards that in case you're missing it you got your speed lines pointing at him <laughs> nice phrase cool i like how it gets ready it finishes on the eyebrows just look at your hair animation there look at that little prop detail how it opens whoever did the lighting on this and everything hats off come on speaking of which Every frame of painting. Yep, that's the channel. Cool, cool, cool. And that, all of that gets affected by just that little compression. Picky, picky. What I think cool to feel a squishiness. Just a little squish in the skin and in the shape there. Being super picky here. That's cool too. Look at that. Tough to do. Those shots. There I say I have my fair share of shots where... Sometimes you have a shot, you know, it could be a certain amount of frames. And then for editing purposes, it's what we call handles. So it could be 4, 8, 12, depending on what you have. And sometimes you might have like a 6 frame shot and 12 frames of handles. It's been a long time. I think we're usually on 4 or 8 frames, usually 8. Um, but sometimes, a long time ago, you used to have 12. But I remember having a shot like this. <laughs> it's ridiculous where you have to do so much pre-roll and post-roll and make everything workable, especially if they're a sim. So having short shots, sometimes you feel like, ah, that's just a couple of frames. That can be really, really difficult to make it read. So going through this frame by frame, cool, you go inverted frame there. And all that is still very clear. That in terms of those shapes, the drag in the hair, you understand the turn. But watch this in real time how it's not confusing. 
just enough to feel that and to read the face and to read how eyes closed, open mouth, all this feels where it's not tense, not in control. It feels like, oh, she got hit. It's very cool. Get to this here. <laughs> nice. But she's still able to grab the bag. That's cool. Grabbing this with... See, she still has somewhat, like, I won't say out of control, but like that's, oh, she got hit. Not too much force in this arm. And it's this arm that does everything. There's a slight stretch there. And just like with her knives, you can see how hand is here, but that gets affected actually before she grabs it. You can see the grab happens here. It's very cool. Stretch in the prop. Look at that. I get a one frame stretch. Always clean in terms of the legs. So even something like this, and that's for people watching when you have anything with overlapping limbs. I mentioned that to my students a lot where, hey, this is cool for color silhouette. It still reads as an arm. But when you have a passing frame like this, you want to be careful that you don't have too much where that leg might be here and the foot back here. So you just have a clump and then one foot. So this is still clear as two legs, still clear. Even this is clear, even though it starts to overlap here, it's still clear and then we're free. So that's very cool. Ooh, impact as well. Bam, you see that compression on the legs. To the effect, nice drag on the legs. Come on, it's like every frame is just so well done here. Oh, prop interaction. I know this is a big. <laughs> Oh, nice. She's protected here, just in terms of that pose. Nice. Actually, my frame is slightly out here. Let me bring this in here. So let's see the face. Bam. It's cool. As she bounces off, you got that drag in the head. It's also cool how things are not always perfectly framed. Let's go back here and watch this. Yeah, it's neat. I was a big fan of that too, where it just feels a bit more, I would say realistic, just because it's also stylized, but I like, I'm very picky about camera work and I like that sometimes it's just neat to have things that are just not beautifully composed, but they still come in and then end up being nicely staged and it's all very clear. Again, the silhouette is clear, effects are clear, that's in the foreground, it's an important point of the story here, but still that little moment of not super perfect framing, I'm a big fan of that. Ba -boom. You can see here how the animation slightly changes, gets a bit more smooth. Less step around twos. So it's a bit more detailed. Just like when, when uh, he was at the beginning here around the wall. Let me go back here. You can see here how this was a bit smoother. Now we're back to her. Kind of the same thing. Nicely done though. Nice subtle animation with just a little... You can see as you hit shapes. Again, for anybody doing facial animation, you don't want to hit shapes and just BAM! You know, like almost step beyond something smooth like this you want to be careful that you ease into those and still have a little bit of a hold you can see how those corners still expand just enough you still have lid animation on the eyes changes in the eyebrows almost a little bit of a squash and then an extension it's cool slight hair animation nice contact too here on the fingers as the shoulder drops it's not slidey clean silhouette just in case you want to make it super clear Fairly centered. It's nice. But your speed lines again. Big actions. You're going to have clear silhouette. Following this. Nice with the drag. That's cool. I love this. Get you starting your, your rounded shapes in your body. <sighs> Bit of a camera shake too. As that element comes closer. Oh, cool. I'm just a fan of leading to this and then that focus. That's what my old cool thing is that. It's not, you know, sometimes when, again, I'm, I'm leaning onto like student work here when sometimes characters get up, right? And you might have not super control of your eye box. So your eyes look down and as she does this, maybe it looks even further down. And as the head goes up, now finally the eyes look here. And that's when I always point out, you gotta think about eye direction. What is the focus of the character? Well, I mean, there's the back, she needs the back. There's the focus of the impending danger and the character coming towards her. So she never loses focus, even on, on the head that's this low, the body this low. You still have the eyes, it gives it that very intense look here. Clean silhouette on the hands and arms. Into that, come on. So cool. Gaining again, giving that sense of speed and Scanning on the camera. You can see here, this is getting closer. Whoa. It's cool too, the reflection too. I mean, come on, that frame again. 
just love that. Art direction is great. Such a fan of this. Oh, quick move. That's always a moment for frame by frame for fingers. Come on. Every frame is a different hand pose. Cool. Even then, even when you start to cover, almost, right? You still have eyes. You still have at least one eye. You still can. Was it a close up thing? You do want to focus on the face and the emotion there and the action, the strain. And it's never confusing. It's great. Got your clean posing again. Everything with that nice. Oh, takes it again. Nice weight too. Just enough, just enough frames here holding onto this before the overlap, the moving down, and the sliding down of the body. Let's go frame by frame just quickly here. I want to see from my own satisfaction here. Oh, nice overlappy stuff here. So cool. Nice. Look at that. All clean. I know, harping on fingers, but come on, it's neat. Ah, and then we're back. Back to the bag. This is your weapon handling. You know it, I was going to look. And it's there, just a tiny bit. Ah, oh, here it is. You got the squeezing as you push this in. This is what I was talking about when the fingers then trigger. It's been cool to see some squeeze or some change there, and it's right there. Even tiny stuff like that. It's going to be a stronger grip. Put this in and you want to push and click that in. There's going to be a stronger grip. There's, there's movement here, basically, right? You move this up. There's going to be more movement. And this gun might be looser in the hand if you don't grip it stronger. So now that this goes up, you can see it here. Well, I got to grip it stronger. So this is the changing animation there. Picky, 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 but I love it. Love that thumb. Whoever animated this, put that in there. It's great. Nice. And we're back to this moment here from the beginning. These are your head accents and how he leads into that moment with that turn. Continues into this. Again, still nice. You know there's so much room here that it has to change this. Because with that type of framing, we're, we're getting so edgy. And we're moving this way. We're losing comfortable room here. That you're feeling like, well, you're telling me something by giving this more and more room. And... Yeah, character looks over. Yes, you have a focus change, and yes, you have the color change, so we know to look here. But still, the character still emphasizes that by looking over this way, and you have that kind of opening again. And just in case, even though it's blurry, you have a little move here. Wow, look at that. It's a lot of work. Yeah, you got your eye darts here, your thought process, character's thinking. I mean, you know, whoever watches this and is familiar with this or obviously the person who animated this. But again, this is for, for students, whoever is watching this. At this moment, you have to think about, is she just transfixed by the fire? Is she in shock or not? Or is she assessing the situation and thinking about, hmm, what could I do? And that's why she has those looks. All of that, all that tells you that there's thought process. Yeah, it's cool. Now, compared to him... He's listening, and then he has that. It's a stare. It's very short though, but he if this would be long, it'd probably be just be listening. And then you got that just for that change of wait, 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 that reaction. You can see again. Nicely done. How much of the skin gets deformed on that squeeze. Always got your asymmetry. Even if it's subtle, just have a slight change in all the shapes. See? Even it goes in and out. It's really nice. <laughs> nice. That's cool too. And this is a good thing for timing too. If you watch this, right? You have a lot of movement. The body. Body goes left and right. The head moves. And then you got that moment of contrast for seriousness. And he says, I got this, right? Watch this. Just hits that moment. But you still got asymmetry. It's still appealing in the shapes. And then, of course, you got the awesomeness of the 2D effects again going in there. And I love that little... A little sniffy moment. You can still see. I would love to see uh, wireframe unshaded to see the topology and see how much gets affected by this. Because if you frame through all of that, all of that goes in there. You can see the structure is still there. It's not all, you know, rubbery. This is loose. This goes up of the muscles, but this is still strong. You still got the bone and then the cartilage there that would be stronger. This is your soft part of the face. 
like that. Then it relaxes onto this side. And as always, head accents and head moves. I love that it leads that turn with the head. It's very determined as he goes and looks over there and leads with the head into that turn. That's cool. Nice. That's also cool for contrast where it's not just one move and then hold, but it just has that one little thing. Watch the end. Look and boop, right there. Just that little, little change looking over. That's cool. Of course, this with this gives you a nice color silhouette, dark and light, but it's cool. I love this. Very clean. Even like the magazine clip here, all that is clean. A little bit of negative space there. Actually, it's not. It's part of the fire. But anyway, it still adds to it. It's very cool. Ooh, something to go frame by frame. I'm curious how this gets affected. Let me see. We got this here. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. It's a cool frame to go in there. Disturbs that. That's cool. Very clean. All is... Oh, you got the text again. Come on, let's watch this in real time. Hold on. And... Oh, a little camera shake too. Watch this again. Ready and... Bam! Nice. You got a little bit of a change there as he turns around. Just enough. You can see for contrast. How this face opens up for surprise. Ooh, hold on. This is for something for overlap and follow through. Let's see. Character comes in. Clean. It's also very confident there. Eyes closed. Clean look. She stops. So you got a little bit of a stretch. Tiny bit of a stretch there. And then as the body stops, you can look at the framing here. If I go and be picky, if you have that line of the head, right? Bam. Fairly stops on the same frame. But in order to make this not harsh and poppy, you can see all of that that drags continues. So that gives you that little bit of a softness, even here in the in all of this. So you can have quick, harsh stops, but when you have overlapping actions like this, it will help you soften this. But you can still see on what the gun is doing. You still have a nice little moment of relaxation. Like this is not harsh. I mean, like this is a stronger structure that can stop foo, on a dime. But this is looser, right? So if your body here and the and the arm and the gun, if this stops, it's still going to have a bit of a looser moment. This is not as strong. And you can see this here as the body stops. So overlaps and you have that slightly looser. It's cool. Like that too. You know, you know it. You know when I look at this, I actually changes that pose. But technically that's your pose. And that's a little different pose. You might even argue it's a little pose and a sub pose. But even that. That means that on that change, the muscles will tighten. There might be a little more of an intention, or intention, tension in this. You can see this, how uh, she squeezes a little bit more. And then that is just appropriate to make that little hand change there. Ooh, just a slight change of focus into that. And then we got cool titles, cool designs. Lauren, there's your title here, but we're not done yet. Because you think he's dead. This appears in response. Whoa, that's cool. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I got to look at this frame by frame. Feel lens flare, depending on what kind of lens you have. Different type of flares. They're not round. That's cool. That's cool, too, how the legs are not there just yet. Starts with this and then fades out. Finishes there. And then, ooh, that's cool. Comes from the middle out. Come on, again. I mean, you see this. I just want to go and animate this. I can't have stuff to do today, <laughs> but it's cool. Nice too, with the more relaxed poses as he's somewhat tired, shoulders down. That's also cool. Watch this in real time. That, just that little loose arm. Then he goes back, straight back in there, a little bit tighter hand, right? You wouldn't be that relaxed because now he's tightening up, shoulders go up, forward. Everything is a bit tighter. So you see that in the hand pose as well. Good contrast too in how he does this, right? In terms of that loose hand. It's cool too that it actually stays until here. Then this hand, different hand pose. Into this, just a bit short, coming again, different hand pose into more of a kind of bottom ish of that finger. Swipe, watch this again. Just for contrast, it's always different. And, and then that, that's cool. 
Yeah, every move, especially if you have a repetitive movements like this, the wiping, you have to think about, well, gotta make this different. A little bit of a contrast there. Nice, get a little tilt in the head there. But even this, you can see how much there's a little stretchiness, a little squashiness, a little change in the face shapes, and the face structure, just a bit. Nice too here how eyes go up and then the eyebrows finish that moment for the surprise. Very cool. And ba -ba! reveal. Oh, come on. So cool. That's yeah, really neat. Let's go back to the beginning here. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. <laughs> Slide change there. And then we're getting into the end frame. So nice. Nice post there too. Come on. Everything about this is super cool. That's it for my subjective view of all of this. Whoever did this. Fantastic work. It's really, really cool. Can't wait to see more. I would love to see a whole movie in this style, of course. Such a fan. Come on. It's just really, really cool. Anyway, that's it for my analysis. Feel free to look in the description playlist for more animation analysis work. And if you like this, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. Of course, you know the spiel at the end, all the YouTube stuff. But feel free to look around and do all kinds of stuff in terms of acting analysis, animation analysis, and lectures, and, and rig reviews, and all kinds of things. Look around, and if you like it, feel free to subscribe, as I said, and follow all the other uploads that I have. And that's it. It's a long one. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience for watching this until the very end.